Welcome to Divine Love Talk with Dr. Parthenia Grant, where we talk about health, well-being, and the love of the divine that exists in all of us. Now, here's your host, Dr. Parthenia Grant. Thank you for joining us once again on Divine Love Talk. I am Dr. Parthenia Grant at drparthenia.com. And today, along with my lovely co-host, Dr. Sarah Larson with drsarahlarson.com and Kim Michaels, our expert on the ego and spirituality, joining us from Estonia um, at transformationaltoolbox.com. I'm so excited to have... Uh, a transformational leader, speaker, and coach, Coot Blackson. Hello, Coot. How Welcome. Are you? It's great to be here. All right. Now, I understand that um, you just finished this amazing workshop that was for women only. Women only. All right. So, why no men? <laughs> and tell us the name of it. Talk, well, the talk firstly, to us. the seminar was, I just finished it last night. So, oh, I'm wow. functioning on about four hours of sleep. Oh, goodness. But uh, it was an amazing, amazing uh, seminar. It was the fifth one I've done. We okay. just did one in Israel. We just finished one in LA. It's called the Man Breakthrough Experience. Okay. It's really about assisting women in <clears throat> decoding men and transforming the hidden blocks that keep them from attracting love and keep them from being love fully. So okay. it's basically, it was a two and a half day experience over the weekend and it's a transformational sort of experiential immersion seminar where I create an experience and a space and processes that really assist women in uh, peeling away all the layers that prevent them from being the full expression of love, you know? And so... Why did you decide to do it for women only? Yeah, see, over the last 13 years, I've basically been coaching people from all walks of life, everyone from billionaires to celebrities to entrepreneurs to children to circus performers. And what started happening was a lot of the women clients who were amazing women, they'd read the books, they'd been to the seminars, they, they'd studied the information, you know, how to get a man, catch a man, keep a man, <laughs> fry a man, love a man. And uh, they would come to me, and one of the issues that kept coming up inevitably was around relationship of course and they kept bringing up to me uh questions of you know Kuta, I'm, I'm just you know i know this information i i know what i should do i know what i shouldn't do uh yet i still keep repeating the same patterns you know i i still keep attracting the same kind of man i why doesn't he commit to me why why do i keep attracting the same patterns over and over and over again so there was a lot of confusion around okay. relationships for <clears throat> women even though they knew the information you see i believe the information by itself is helpful mm -hmm. but it's not enough right and i found that you know in relationship love brings up everything tends to bring up everything unlike itself yeah. in order to be healed and processed and looked at and clear. It shows us parts of ourselves that aren't complete, parts of ourselves that need to be embraced and need healing. So as this started to happen, I realized that uh, these amazing women in this particular area needed some support. So I created a process that really assisted them in transforming and really from that, transformation the women themselves started asking me to create an experience for them okay to really assist them in understanding men but what I found was really you know you attract to yourself based on who you are right and it's ultimately it's not really about a man it's not really about a man out there. The right. way I see it, a man is simply a manifestation of an aspect of yourself. Okay. A man is simply manifesting that part of yourself that shows you who and where you are in this particular moment in time. So I say if you want to shift what you're attracting to, you get to shift what's inside. So even though it's called the man breakthrough, it's simply an excuse to have a conversation about yourself. It's simply a portal, a doorway, a bridge for a woman to see where her stuff is, to see where her blind spots are consciously and unconsciously and take a deep dive into healing herself and uh, transforming herself. And it's an excuse, really, to have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I, I still... I'm digging okay. on <clears throat> why you chose not to let men on it. Uh, do, do you have like one that's especially for men? And not yet. It, see, it was the women 
honestly, that kept on. I, I had no intention. I did not choose to create the seminar. Oh, okay? you're giving them what they're asking for. Uh, yeah, I, I had no, and, I, and I'll tell you what happened for me. It was an organic process. I had no intention of creating the seminar, but women kept asking, kept on. I'm not really a relationship specialist. What I really am is, an, is a transformational sort of specialist. I help people break through limitations, <clears throat> un, unravel themselves, and really peel away the layers that prevent them from being fully who they are, fully self-expressed, fully their divine selves fully right. their authentic selves but women kept asking and they kept asking so I sent out a questionnaire to my social media and my Facebook and Twitter and I said who I'm thinking of creating this thing for women who wants to uh, fill out the questionnaire in an hour or, or two I got over a hundred responses oh, okay. from women and when I read <coughs> their questionnaires I sat there one day reading their questionnaires and I started to cry because I felt the heart of woman I felt each woman's, no matter how much she'd been betrayed, how hurt she'd been, how many challenges, how much pain she had around men and relationship, reading, just reading the homework, there was, I felt the palpable desire of a woman's yearning and longing to love. Yes. A woman's yearning and long, longing to understand. Uh, you know, and it just so touched me. Then I invite five women to my living room to just ask them a few questions. Okay. I was resistant. <laughs> and it turned into an amazing transformational session. And from there, I literally felt the soul of woman called me it was like she reached out called me and said create this so i just said yes to the call okay and it's been uh it's been an amazing amazing you know breakthrough and transformation and you know i create processes and experiences that what i've really found over the weekends and doing you know five of them in the last year is ultimately we use the man mirror paradigm as a feedback mechanism but as a woman peels away those layers those mechanisms that have built up over time she gets in touch at the core with the inherent reality that who and what she is is love yes. over time she may have forgotten that she's love but she gets in touch with the reality reality that i am am love itself and as she realizes that and the more she's able to embody that rest into that on every level and express that naturally then that becomes an incredibly attractive force <laughs> you know that that yes. then from that place as she <clears throat> is seeing that within herself expressing that authentically within herself allowing that to be seen she can then attract a man that is reciprocal in his ability to feel that see that and appreciate that to her so it's about helping a woman embody and incarnate the love that she is and I I believe that more than ever right now on our planet, the way our planet's going, the way our world is going, it, these are intense times. We need the feminine gift. Yes. We need women who are embodied in that full incarnation as love, intuition, compassion more than ever. All right. You're listening to Divine Love Talk with my special guest, uh, Coot Blackson, talking to us about his man breakthrough experience <laughs> for women. For so, women. So now you know I want to ask you, because of the title, didn't you have men that wanted to come? We had a few. <laughs> so what did we, you what did you say? To we them? had a few. We, we, you know, later for you. Later for you. <laughs> and, and and really, it was the women. More women asking, when are you going to create something for the, for the men? Well, right. And so, I'm asking now. Yeah. Okay. Well, when 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 it's everything I do is intuitive. So okay. when the time is right, when it when it aligns, this just something that just aligned. Okay. It was just destiny, and I suggested the calling, and it was, <clears throat> it was it's amazing. It's a very special, unique you know, different kind of process where I work with people on different levels. Okay. That's really what I do. Well, see, I've noticed, Kud, because I've been doing the, the whole spiritual, uh, metaphysical thing for decades now, and I notice it's mostly women who yeah. do the self-help, yeah. the self-improvement. Yeah. And um, But I do think that with the in, in the times that we're in, with the um, embracing and the resurrection of the divine feminine, yeah. we really also need to do some serious work with women men mm -hmm. and helping them open up their hearts mm -hmm. and uh, let the love in and I, I would like to pull Kim Michaels in on the discussion because Kim you had you had been mentioning about us humans here on the planet being manifestations of the divine feminine and I'd love for you to um, segue into that a little bit well I think it sounds really good what Kurt said about uh, developing a relationship with yourself with your higher self and knowing who you are because I think a lot of the times um, it's almost like we have been brought up to play these roles both men and women and I think honestly that these roles don't function anymore I, th I think back on my own parents and my grandparents you know where the men 
uh, talked about certain things and the women talked about other things and and I actually think about how we could sit at at a dinner conversation at a birthday party and the men were talking across the table to each other and the women were talking across the table to each other but they weren't talking with each other and and I think that's something that really needs to happen in this age where we learn how to communicate with each other and I don't see how we can do that unless we get in touch with something inside ourselves, really. Well, I, I'm with you 100%. Mm -hmm. I totally remember that. And Dr. Sarah, with you coming from the East, where it's very delineated, the, the feminine role and the masculine role, that yes. there was a lot of talking over each other. Um, and created segregation. And yes. um, I remember for myself growing up, I had to learn how to talk to boys. <laughs> uh, you know, just the, this absolute sheer fear You had to be bold, me. right? I had to be bold because no one in, in my culture or in my life taught me how to interact and relate to men and quite often it's so hard to be vulnerable and transparent and yet we have this longing to be that with the men in our lives and the um, the reflection as cute as saying as, as Kim is saying the reflection that comes in as our opposite and equal on the other side of the room reflecting back to us that's the areas that we long for to show ourselves and to really connect in an authentic vulnerable transparent way and so this for is so important for women especially today because it is up to us the Dalai Lama said it's the women of the West that can transform the world and I think too it's so important there are, I have family members that have never been in the room with someone of the opposite sex <laughs> alone alone <laughs> and they are counting on me to allow and you and every woman and man that's hearing this um, voice it, they're counting on us to stand up and feel into our hearts and allow freedom in ourselves and as we free ourselves to love deeply vulnerably transparently it allows us to open our hearts and spaces to open the doors that allow them to connect and interact well and that's why I'm so happy that you are doing this work Coot and I really want to encourage you to encourage the men to come together yeah, and do these absolutely. workshops with you because I've listened to a lot of your work yeah. and I and everywhere I go you're there you know and you're I, speaking I, somewhere I, I work with a lot of men too don't, don't you know don't, don't be fooled <laughs> no, no, and I, I know you do, but what I like about you is that you really respect the the divine feminine, yeah. and and you're um, you have um, a lot of um, compassion and and simpatico with that, mm -hmm. and and I think it it would take a man like you to mm -hmm. be able to just um, set an example. And, you know this is what it looks like and it's okay to be authentic it's okay to be vulnerable it's and, and you're still a man yeah it doesn't make you less than a man uh -huh. thank you well and and speaking of that I also think in, in in the next segment we're really going to be going into it in the next half we're going to be talking about your uh, Bali experience and you're calling it the boundless bliss Bali that's uh -huh. the website boundless bliss Bali dot com I'm all for that I love <laughs> me some Bali <laughs> and some bliss <laughs> oh my god it's just a, it's one of those things that you just just have to experience yeah. to really <clears throat> know what it's like and very very few Americans are um, really th that's not a place that they think about going mm -hmm. you know they go to Hawaii mm -hmm. um, and instead of Bali mm -hmm. and it's really something the energy there in, in terms mm -hmm. of it being sort of like the heart chakra mm -hmm. of the planet and that feminine energy that's there you can just bathe in it <laughs> So um, when we come back from commercial break, we want to, I, I want you to, to talk to us about why you chose Bali and what sure. led you there. Sure. Because, you know, you, you do these trips to India, the transformation, and I want to know how Absolutely. you're doing the one with uh, Bali. You are listening to Divine Love Talk on CRN with Dr. Parthenia Grant at drparthenia.com. Uh, our special guest is Coot Blackson at Boundless Bliss Bali. Dot com, Dr. Sarah Larson at drsarahlarson.com and Kim Michaels at transformationaltoolbox.com. We're going to commercial break. Okay, we're back now. 
with more of Divine Love Talk with my special guest, Coot Blackson. And he ha- his website is Boundless Bliss Bali, Boundless Bliss Bali dot com. And um, I'd like to know <laughs> you do these journeys to yes. India, and yes. I love India. India. Um, I just feel at home there. Mm. And you know how there's some places that, you know, I've traveled all over the world, and mm. there's some places you go to and you step off the plane, and it's like, oh my God, I've been here before. Mm-hmm. I-, I feel like I have come home. Mm-hmm. I felt that way in India. I cried. I was there for a <laughs> month, and when it was time to go, I just cried. I felt like I was leaving home. <laughs> nice. And and the energy there and Bali is the only other place that I visited Mm -hmm. where I I just left my heart in Bali not Mm -hmm. San Francisco Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I want to know your journey what made you decide to do Bali what what, what started happening because you know we're talking about Bali I kind of have to talk about India what started happening what really happened for me about 13 years ago was I was in a place in my life where I felt like I'd reached a certain level. I had a radio show. I had a beautiful girlfriend. Everything was moving forward, you know. And yet something felt like I wasn't fully expressing my authentic self, my true life dharma. Everything was great, but something felt missing. And I think I was either crazy enough or bold enough to just acknowledge the truth of what I was feeling. And I decided that I was literally going to pack everything away, put everything in storage and travel the world in search of answers for myself. I decided I was not going to come back to the U.S. until I found the source of who I was, the source of freedom, the source of true happiness. And I went on a quest and I traveled to Israel and Thailand and just started looking for answers and I found myself in India and what happened for me was I found myself in the Himalayas I found myself traveling everywhere meeting with gurus and teachers and found myself in the poorest state in India called Bihar where even the Indians don't want to go (laughs) and I found myself on the back of a train in the poorest poorest section of the poorest train you can imagine and there I was with about 10 people packed into this little compartment with the epitome of suffering yes and my heart cracked open for seven hours I just weeped because I couldn't believe that in a world where we can send people to the moon and we have such technology that there are people in such suffering you know there was a woman with five kids and they were all sick and they were vomiting for the whole time I, I, I was just weeping feeling the suffering of humanity you know and my heart just broke and then I looked into her eyes a few hours later this same woman and it was as though I felt what was looking at me was the same thing that was looking at her and it was just this oneness Uh, you know my heart then cracked open Mm -hmm. not out of suffering but just out of this sheer interconnectivity compassion just like we are one you know it was like we dissolved and I thought wouldn't it be amazing if world leaders if George Bush if the head of Nike if the head of Google if people in leadership positions were actually on this train having Mm -hmm. this journey having this experience freeing themselves from their own limitations and identity and conditioning so that they could really tap into their authentic selves and live that how would they use their resources Mm -hmm. how would they use their money how would they use their positions to really make a change would we go to war would we do some of the things we're doing what would we do because i believe that our resources and you know are we're given the resources with the responsibility to use them wisely you know yet often they're not so Mm -hmm. i forgot about it for a few years built a coaching business and about six years ago in my meditation had the download and the download was create this journey to india and basically the India journey which then led to the bali journey is it's basically a two-week 24 7 non-stop transformational immersion experiential process where i take a visionary a leader someone who wants to have a big impact on the world to india take away your passport take away your money take away everything from you you write your will before you leave you write letters to everyone in case you don't come back i make you face death because so many of us we're so busy avoiding death yes we're afraid of dying yes. and i believe that to the degree we're afraid of dying is to the degree that we aren't fully free within ourselves to live life Absolutely. radically fully fearlessly powerfully so what i do is i take away all those places that you might be holding on to for a sense of self a sense of this is who i am this is who i am a sense of identity so that you can really find out what remains. What's left when you take away all of that? What remains? Who are you really? That's the question, but not as an intellectual thought or as a concept or as information, but as a living reality. And I customize and I create processes through a, this 24-7 experience on trains, planes, the Ganges, the Himalayas, the Varana, you know, uh, Varanasi, uh, just nonstop throughout India. And I put people in situations that typically might collapse their sense of freedom. So I ask people, what is it that typically might collapse your sense of freedom? Is it <clears throat> someone not calling you back? Is it feeling rejected? Is it, uh, is it your boss? Is it what? We all have things that tend to restrict our freedom. And I 
create and customize an experience that move like a yoga moves people through that stretches them through that so that they can remain free in that and wow. uh, it's a powerful process and then out of that is when <clears throat> my Bali journey began okay that I, I want to go to India with you uh -huh. now <laughs> <laughs> okay so after commercial break we're coming back yes. with more of Coot Blackson awesome. talking about his boundless bliss awesome. Bali awesome. journey um, you're listening to Divine Love Talk on CRN with Dr. Parthenia Grant, Dr. Sarah Larson, and Kim Michaels joining us from Estonia. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, we're back with more of Divine Love Talk on Sierra Inn with Dr. Parthenia Grant, my special guest, Coot Blackson, who is a transformational leader, speaker, and coach. Um, he is, and what's the date um, for Bali, your Boundless ba Boundless uh, Bliss, Bliss Bali. Bali? We do it twice a year, July the 4th, the 4th Independence Day, All true right. independence okay. of, the, of the inner spirit. Right? Okay. Uh, July 4th through the 15th and December 2nd through the 13th. Okay. And uh, how Bali came about was, you know, I started doing these amazing India journeys over the last six years. I've done about 19 of them one-on-one. -on -one. They're one-on-one. -on -one. It's amazing. And people started asking me to create journeys for a group. Okay. And uh, take a group to India. And I just didn't feel the alignment. And about two or three years ago, I was guided to go to Bali. In a nutshell, I had the most transformative experience in Bali. India is very intense it yes. just throws you to the wall yeah. it's like Kali she cracks you open no yeah. mercy spits you out and just you know sends you into infinity it was like yes. that uh, so it's very it can be very hard sometimes but very transformative I found myself in Bali and it was like Kuan Yin it was like the <laughs> yes, divine mother the feminine. feminine just it was like walk it was like bathing in warm coconut oil yes. and that that divine feminine was so graceful and so tender it was almost like she didn't give me anything to resist, but right. in her energy, bathing in the energy of Bali was like a, a subtle and tender unraveling of the nervous system. And all those layers that built up in the nervous system and in the cells just melted away. And I didn't even realize it till I was on the plane. Like just I, being there. I would just be there in her, in her presence, yes. in her, you know, through osmosis. And just at the end of each day, I'd be like, wow, something mm -hmm. lifted. And I didn't yes. even know what happened. Right. And that was Bali for me. And I was guided through Bali literally just just intuitively to some of the most secret spots to some of the most sacred spots people think Bali is a physical location they see the temples they see the mountains but I say Bali the real Bali doesn't exist on what you can see yes on the physical the real Bali exists in the other dimension absolutely so I've created this 11 day <clears throat> 11 and a half day immersion transformational experiential seminar training without walls where I use Bali as yes. the backdrop absolutely and I kind of we take people into the secret Bali yes into the dimension that you can't see but to me the real pilgrimage is not out there it's inside yes to find those places inside those secret caves those secret places inside that we may have lost touch with and to really reconnect with the inner dimension of the inner Bali that exists inside of each and every one of us and I believe that you know a lot of people I call it transformational travel a lot of people tend to travel to escape themselves yes. and escape their lives. Oh my God, I feel limited. I yeah. feel, you know, this isn't working. That's not working. So let me go on vacation, drink, yeah. have fun, and just forget myself and then come back to my life. Right. What I do is I take people away, unplug people away from their typical patterns and tendencies for a moment so there's some space that we can then face themselves so they can really find themselves beyond their conditioning, beyond their identities, beyond their patterns, and then come back into the world after reconnecting to that free space inside. The way I see it too is when we're born, we're born free. Yes. You know, we're, as children, we're born in touch with our aliveness, our joy. A child will jump on a table, won't right. have too much self consciousness. Right. We're free. And I think that's why when we look at children, there's a divinity, there's a yeah. divine love that we see in a child that reminds us of that within ourselves. And as we go through life, slowly we begin to lose touch with that true, essential, divine love. Absolutely. You know, we deal with our parents, we yeah. deal with life and media. And, bef and the hustle and bustle. And the hustle and bustle. Mm -hmm. And we start disconnecting and we start finding all sorts of ways and strategies and mechanisms to not feel to not feel pain to not get hurt we start learning a survival mechanism to get love to be approved to fit in to function just to ultimately survive in the world and we end up building up layers and limiting ourselves and becoming sort of scrunched into a certain shape and we call this me 
Yeah. So I say to the degree that we are conditioned in this particular identity that we've gotten locked into as a survival pattern, to that degree, we're not really free. We think we have free will. Mm -hmm. We think we're choosing our lives, but we don't realize that often we're being run by our conditioning. Yes. So the work I do in Bali, in India, in my seminars, ultimately, is to assist people in unconditioning, uncoaching, unteaching, unraveling themselves, becoming aware of it and unraveling themselves from that con those conditioned responses, those conditioned patterns that they think they are that's creating their life and as they unravel that, they touch into that eternal dimension of who they are. And from that place of connect connection to who they are, feeling into what is it that wants to express through them. Many times we think, you know, there's a lot of books out there that will try to help you get what you want. Right. But the thing is, we might try and get what we want based on who we think we are. But if we're not really in touch with who we truly authentically are, what we think we want will be based on who we aren't. Right. Then when we get that, we're like, well, this isn't really uh -huh. what I want. This doesn't really fulfill me. So I feel like one of the first steps is really getting people in touch with who they truly are. And that's what <coughs> Bali and India is about. Well, what I, I, what I found, especially in Bali, but, but also in all of the, the nature spots that are connected to these powerful energy vortexes, I've found that I can transform yes. whatever stuff I'm working on, that it gets accelerated. Yes. And in Bali, the people are so peaceful, and the people are so in touch with, with nature. Did you feel the nature divas nature, there? Yeah. That there's so many nature spirits in Bali. There's so many. There's such a vibra vibratory frequency high there. Frequency. Very high. You'll be there's certain um, jungles. Yes, you know, and, and the and, waterfalls. And the waterfalls that this it <clears throat> just has the vibration of the feminine. Yes, and the, and the, the beauty mother, of the feminine. You know, the mother. You can feel the essence of the mother. Yes. The real mother there that just, she just works on you. Yes. You know, just tenderly, she just holds you. Effortlessly. Like in her you know that Bali, the island itself, if, the, if you look at it on the map, is the shape of a womb. It, it definitely looks like it and feels like <laughs> it. Because you feel safe. You know, yes. when, when you're there, you just feel like, okay, I can yeah. deal with all of this yeah. stuff. What happens in Bali is because that space is created in that feminine, you know, space, you can relax. Yes. And everything you've had to hold on to to just hold it together, now there's a certain safe space to relax and allow the nervous system yes. to start unwinding so that all that those layers can come up and, and be faced and be freed and be released through that process. So it's beautiful. And it truly helps to be in a country where a woman can be safe. Yes. You can walk around yes. all night by yourself, yep. never worry about getting molested. Yep. And I mean, how many places in the world can can you say that? Not many. Oh, okay. Not many. Bali, <laughs> Bali is that safe space. Yes. You know, and that's why. That's why I would say I didn't really choose Bali. I went to Bali just for my. I was guided. Bali there. chose you. Uh, Bali chose me. <laughs> Accident. The same accidentally. thing for me. Yep. I had no clue. Kim, um, I went to Bali um, after the conference when I met you last year, and the whole purpose of my trip was to go to Australia to meet Kim, mm. and and Bali was just like that's where you need to go, <laughs> and I didn't know why, and I went by myself, mm. and it was the most amazing experience. So Kim, I'd like to bring you in about the importance of in connecting with the divine feminine you know people in LA especially in the in all cities we're so disconnected from nature mm -hmm. the importance of um, connecting with mother earth in terms of healing the divine feminine I'm sure you got something you can contribute on that well I think Kut has made a very good statement uh, where he talked about Bali and Kuan Yin and he said that the Divine Mother didn't give him anything to resist <laughs> right. and actually that that triggered in me an un a deeper understanding of what I feel about the Divine Feminine because mm. I really feel that that is the essence of the Divine Feminine. Mm. It still manages mm. to face us or force us to face this need to transform ourselves but it doesn't do so in a controlling way and it doesn't mm. do so the way that that the masculine normally does, where it's in your face <laughs> forcing you to change. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very gentle way, and that's why I actually think, you know, like Sarah was saying, uh, the Dalai Lama, I think he's in tune with something when he says that the women, uh, because I felt the same thing, that it is the feminine energy 
that will transform the world because just like we talked about in the last show with the rabbi you know of the three uh, monotheistic religions really this has been force 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 and we look mm. at everything in our culture our technology even is force based mm -hmm. and i really believe that we need to transcend this force based mindset and i think the divine feminine is the only way to do it but we have to find it in ourselves mm -hmm. instead of thinking it's some goddess out there mm -hmm. Because that has, of course, been a problem with the monotheistic yes. religions, that God is out there. Right. And that's what we need to find the God within. Mm -hmm. and, and thank you. And I think that, that Coop, that's what yes. you're helping people do yes. is, you, you know, by going to these sacred spaces, yes. I think the work is much easier yeah. uh, it, with, it, with people because they can let down their mask. Yeah. and it's the they can, It unplugs okay. people from their regular everyday TikTok, TikTok, yes. TikTok routine, going to work, going here, Facebook, going, distraction family, you know, and, and, and the groove mm -hmm. the pattern so we, we unplug people it's like being in 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 maybe a dirty river for a moment <laughs> i'm taking them out so they can actually get clean and yes. take a look at stuff i don't know if i want to go back there you know so it gives people the space for a moment and i think kim said it beautifully too is we have to find it within ourselves and the reason for taking people to bali is not because it's out there in bali it's already inside yes. of themselves and but, i believe but, but it's, it allows it allows that it allows people to unplug to go inside to tap into the inner bali the mm -hmm. inner goddess the, the inner heart space that's already inside and i feel if someone's called to a certain place to me it's just a, it's a symbol a uh, it's symbolic that they're resonating with what Bali is or whatever the place the energy, is within yeah. themselves yes. and that is pulling them to access the deeper dimension of that inside of themselves because it's already there otherwise they wouldn't feel called to that you're absolutely right because there are some places that just do not resonate yep. with me and there are some places like I cannot tell you why I have to go yes. I, I have to go to Machu Picchu <laughs> next yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you why oh one Dr. of the Sarah. most important things I think that Bali or any trips to India allows is for you to get to a place where you're not trying to fix something yes. within yourself. And when you stop looking to fix something, you can feel within yourself that healing space, that wholeness mm. that already exists. And we allow our senses mm. to come alive. Um, and when our senses are alive, we're in bliss, we're in joy, and that joy draws out authentically your purpose, why you're here, and all these doors begin to open um, as Joseph Campbell shares follow your bliss yes mm. well, and authentically within our hearts we have there's a saying in India anyone who is meant to be in India finds the way yes. to be in India it winds up happening within all people from all walks of life all over the world have this longing this pull karmically they wind up in India yes. and um, same thing with Bali as part of that energy space yeah. yeah I think when you're ready to open up your heart and heal that you will be called to these yeah. energetic places yeah. where you can do that work in a safe space yeah. and for me it accelerates yeah. it and the thing I loved about Bali was I was in Australia for a while and I couldn't find raw food I couldn't <laughs> find kombucha I, in you know, Australia oh yeah. my god yes and I was all over the place that was in three different cities and then I just gave up because I had shipped my kombucha and I was like almost out of my goods and I said oh well you know while I'm in Bali forget it I get there there's kombucha there's raw food Ooh. there's vegan there's vegetarian and I said look at this little place the mother oh my has God. provided yes <laughs> And and organic, yeah, everything and the water it's nourishing, you know. Yes, Bali is such the nourishment of the soul and the mind and the body, and it just it provides that space. And you can get <clears throat> um, a bot full body massage for little of nothing, <laughs> nothing yeah. every day. I was getting them yeah. twice a day yeah. and eating this amazing food yeah. and just every day giving thanks for yeah. the fact that I was out of TikTok. You know, you know what's beautiful. You just triggered something about Bali too. Is you see the women constantly, f maybe three, four times a day, doing these offerings. Yes, and I all think over the place. Different from some places that used to be considered spiritual spots. Oh no. Because they're, they're constantly in a devotional state, it creates a matrix, a vibrational yes. field 
it, it enlivens the land. Yes. Because they're in that state, they're keeping that frequency alive. Everybody. So everything in Bali and the land is alive with spirit. Yes. And the dimension between this reality and the spirit dimension is the veil is so thin. You can just kind of pop your head into Absolutely. it for a moment and, and access it. And I think that's what's beautiful is the devotional you know, sensibility of the people, the orientation is on something that's real. And I think just being in that moves us from the our attention being turned on myself, my ego, myself, my identity, my stuff, my issues, fit, right. and to something, uh, you know, something a little greater. Because you, you see it, and, and I, I even talk to the people there a lot, yeah. the drivers, yeah. and, they, and they said, well, you know, we live our life, you know, yes. like we schedule everything around our devotion. Yes. You know, like in, in America, we try to find some time to meditate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. you know, and it never works. We, if you do it that way, you, you have to work everything around your meditation, yeah. around your yoga, around yeah. your health, because in, in the rat race, it's not going to happen. Well, we schedule, yeah. we schedule everything around our ego right <laughs> <laughs> and reinforcing the ego because everything is about how do I look blah, blah, yes. the makeup blah, the gym uh -huh. the dad it's right. all reinforcing the ego yes. so then we have to get away for a moment to unreinforce it and then come back and then keep but, it, <laughs> but, but in those find some balance yeah, in those places it's, it's kind of the opposite it's oriented on what's real yes what's eternal yes you know so and 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 the the peacefulness of the people and then ev even the businesses yeah. they, they all have their little offerings yeah. and people drive around with the offerings in their yeah. car yeah. and yeah. you know there's no hypocrisy yeah. you know they they love they don't like pretend to love yeah. they don't pretend to have that that Christ consciousness they they are letting that light shine yeah. um, you are listening to divine love talk on CRN with dr. Parthenia Grant and my amazing guest Coot Blackson. Yes, great to be here. I am so excited that you're doing this boundless um, blissbali.com. And I want to encourage people to go out there and experience this with him because your energy is just so full of um, light and love. And we need more Coot Blacksons on the planet. Uh, we'll be back with more of Divine Love Talk um, after commercial break. I am Dr. Parthenia Grant with my co host, Dr. Sarah Larson at Dr. To Sarah Larson.com and Kim Michaels joining us from Estonia with transformationaltoolbox.com. Okay, we're back wrapping this up on Divine Love Talk with Dr. Parthenia Grant at drparthenia.com. We're on Facebook under Divine Love Talk and our special guest, Coot Blackson, talking to us about his boundless bliss bali experience coming up what date july 4th july 4th and if anyone feels called you know you can apply go to the website apply watch the video feel the calling you'll know you'll That's know if right. it's for you and and we're posting that on uh, divine love talk as awesome. well awesome. um and i would what would you like to leave the audience with mm. about the the bali experience and the whole transformation you know w oh, here's what i'd say i feel that the reason we're born is to evolve and grow and the reason we're born in this life is to become the full realized expression of our divinity our divine love and to express that artfully and creatively on this planet and that each of us have a life each of us have a purpose a purpose to be who we are a purpose to realize who we are a purpose to love radically and uh, so what i just like everyone to ponder is a question i like to throw out when i speak sometimes is simply what if today was the last day of your life? What if today was the last day of your life? Are you ready? And if you're not ready, what would you need to give? What would you need to say? What would you need to express? Who would you need to forgive? What would you need to communicate? What would you need to share in order to be fully complete, fully at peace, fully ready to make peace and go arms wide open? Because none of us know when that moment's going to come. It could come at any moment. It's the only thing that's guaranteed in this life is the death of the body. The soul is eternal, can never be born, never died. But the body just, you know, transmutes into another form. So I invite each of you who are listening to live fully, love fully, love radically, give everything to everything as everything, holding nothing back so that there are no regrets whatsoever. What if today was the last day of your life? Are you ready? And, you know, if it was the last day, would we argue 
and yeah. fight with people? Yeah. Would we waste our energy? Yeah. Would we say mean-spirited things to our loved ones yeah. that we can't call back? Yeah. And I always try to keep that in mind with mm. my loved ones, mm. um, how I talk to them and how I mm. treat them. Mm. That's so important. If, if you go, what, what if I walk out the door and I never see yeah. them again? Look at you the know, people in 9-11. You know, they had right? no idea that they weren't going to come back that night. Or the people in the Southeast Asian tsunami had no idea. We think we have forever. We think, you know, the ego, the ego uh, things. We can do so it. 10 years, granted. we can do it 5 years from now, we can do it tomorrow, we're always putting something off for a future moment, but I say now, Love right radically. now is the time. Love now. Well, Kim, what would you like to leave the audience with in terms of our purpose in life and, and love? Well, really that life is a flow and love is a flow and that we spend most of our days, most of our lives resisting, trying to control trying to get to a certain point, but it comes a point where we just have to surrender into the flow. All right. Dr. Sarah. And I would say treat everyone you meet like it's the last day of their life as well. Absolutely. You never know when that's going to wind up being true for that person. And we're so grateful for you guys joining yes. us today from all around the country and all around the world. Thank Coot you. Blackston at BoundlessBollyBliss.com. Thank you so Oh, yeah. BoundlessBlissBolly.com. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank joining you for us, Coot, all and of you. giving us your love and your divine Enjoy. energy. Love you all. And we love you for joining us.